Law and Crime's own Jesse Weber was in the courtroom this morning when the jury was charged and when the jury asked a question and when there was a fight over a juror number 11. Jesse, tell us all. Not even going to interrupt you. <laughs> All right, Linda. First, let me tell you what the latest is. The jury began their deliberations, but they already came out pretty quickly with a note. There is confusion as to the charges, how they're supposed to consider them. They sent out a note asking a bunch of questions. First, they were asking for legal definitions of key terms. The judge said that he'll do a readback if necessary. But this is where things get interesting. I have the verdict form with me, and this is what makes it such a confusing case. They didn't know which charges to consider in which order. So I'm going to tell you right now, this is what was instructed to the jury. The two highest charges are predatory sexual assault. If the jury finds Harvey Weinstein guilty of predatory sexual assault with respect to Annabella Shora or Je and Jessica Mann or Annabella Shora and Miriam Halle, the jury is not to consider the other counts. In other words, he can't be found guilty of predatory sexual assault and rape and criminal sex act. It's the highest charge. That's number one. Number two, this jury also, they asked the question, can they find him guilty on both counts of rape? The answer is no. They can only find him guilty on one of the two counts of rape. And then this is where things get really complicated. If the jury finds Harvey Weinstein not guilty as to predatory sexual assault, the question becomes why? If it's because they don't believe Annabella Shora, then not only would he be found not guilty as to count one of predatory sexual assault, but not guilty as to count three, the other predatory predatory sexual assault. However, if the jury finds Harvey Weinstein not guilty as to predatory sexual assault with count one because they do believe Annabella Shore, but they don't believe um, Miriam Halle, then they find him not guilty of criminal sex act. The same thing goes to apply if they don't believe Jessica Mann, but they believe Annabella Shore. They don't find him guilty of rape. Here's the big concern. Here's the big issue. This jury seems to suggest they are wondering, they asked, why is there no independent charge with respect to Annabella Shore? They even asked, is there a statute of limitations issue? In other words, it seems that maybe the jury's not believing Jessica Mann, not believing Miriam Halle, but they're believing Annabella Shore. They want to find him guilty of Annabella Shore, but they can't do that. Now, I know that's really complicated, but this is what the jury's going through, this complicated set of issues. Now, Linda, you had mentioned juror number 11. Even before the deliberations began, and even a little after the deliberations, the defense tried to get this juror kicked off. They tried to get her kicked off at the very beginning, because as we know that she, in the beginning, she is writing a book, apparently, about predatory sexual uh, men. However, what we just learned, according to Damon Sharonis, is that this woman posted a review about two weeks ago during the course of this trial, a review of a book that deals with this subject matter about predatory men and sexual assault. The defense says this is not right. She should be kicked off. She's biased. Obviously, the judge did not allow that. The judge denied the mistrial, and this case is proceeding forward, and this deliberation is proceeding forward with juror number 11. Jesse, I am sure that the defense is not happy that there's no question first, do you find him guilty of the assault on Mimi Haley, and second, guilty of the assault on Jessica Mann, and then if you find him guilty of that, you can go to the predatory. Did they argue that, and what did the judge say to reject that? My understanding is that's what the defense wanted. They wanted them first to consider the question of Miriam Halle, Jessica Mann, and then Annabella Shore. That's not the way this verdict sheet looks. That's not the way the judge instructed. These jurors have to consider first predatory sexual assault. They have to consider Annabella Shore first. And if they don't uh, find him guilty of predatory sexual assault, it's the reason why. Is it because they don't believe Annabella Shore? They don't believe Miriam Halle? That's going to dictate how they go through the rest of the charges. Now, it seems like that might be a disadvantage for the defense. Then again, if all they're wondering is why there's no independent charge to Annabella Shore, doesn't that seem to signify that they believe her, but maybe not the two main complaining witnesses in this indictment? This is huge, and this is just giving a sample of what the jury might be thinking about. It's hard to predict, but we weren't even in there for 10 minutes before the jury had a lot of questions. And this confusion might not work out so well for the prosecution. Well, you say it may not work out for the prosecution, but didn't the question seem to indicate, uh, can we find Harvey Weinstein guilty of this, that they were looking for guilty versus not guilty in the questions? 
Right. They, they did say if uh, a couple of questions there were, could they find him guilty of counts three or four or five? And they seem to be wondering their options about finding him guilty with respect to Jessica Mann. Could they find him guilty of predatory sexual assault and the two counts of rape? But really, they can only find him guilty of either predatory sexual assault with Jessica Mann or rape in the first degree or rape in the third degree. Those are their options. They're considering it. Uh, obviously hard to know. I think at this point, though, to be really fair, they're just trying to understand what the charges are and what their options are at this point. Maybe considering what happened with Annabella Shore. Maybe just setting the groundwork, then moving into a, a fuller de deliberation. Could you tell Jesse who the four person is on that jury? Yes, I do. It's a, it's a gentleman. Uh, he sits all the way at the right-hand side. Uh, the jury instructed this uh, four-person to uh, that his vote does not hold any more importance than the other votes, but merely he is there to do some of the procedural matters. For instance, if the jury has a question, the question, the four-person is the person who signs the note. He doesn't necessarily have to write the note, but he has to sign it. And we know this. It's a, it's a, it's a strong position. It's an important position. But again, this four-person doesn't hold any more power over this jury than anyone else. Besides being a man, Jesse, anything else? Is he older, younger? Do we know what his profession is? Do we know any, remember any of his questions that he may have asked during jury selection or answered? I, I don't remember his actual profession. If I saw correctly, he is an African-American gentleman uh, who was sitting apart from the rest of the jurors uh, in the box, but I don't know more about him. He appears to be uh, maybe almost, uh, maybe in his 30s or perhaps 40s, early 40s. Uh, can't tell much more about him than that. Well, that's interesting. Did you get any feel from the jury as they were handing the judge the note? Did, they, did you see anybody talking to each other in the jurors? Sometimes, you know, they lean over like this and they say something. Did you see any of that kind of indication from the jurors and the judges answering the questions that they wanted to, like, immediately talk to each other? Well, I, I didn't see them talking, but they didn't look like they were satisfied with the judge's answers. They appeared to be more confused. In fact, why can't the judge just tell us right now what the definitions are of forcible compulsion or consent? Why do we have to send another note out for him to just do a readback? Why can't we get a physical copy of it? They did appear to be satisfied with these answers. They have the ability to ask the judge as many questions as they need to during, these, during the course of this deliberations. I will say, speaking of jurors, my personal opinion, and I think this was hinted upon by Damon Sharonis, juror number 11, who started the day being questioned by the judge in a public forum when she came back into the courtroom a short while later, she appeared very angry. I don't think she liked her credibility or, excuse me, her bias questioned at all. Uh, I don't think she appreciated that too much. She appeared, in my perspective, to be quite angry uh, as she went into those jury instructions. And did it appear that her anger was directed at the defense or was it just directed at the process and the court for asking her? Uh, could you tell? Impossible to know, but when you sit there, if you're her and thinking, well, who would have a problem with me doing a review about a book about predatory assault? Would it be the prosecution or would it be the defense? And I think <laughs> I could guess her anger is probably directed towards the defense. But I'm guessing. I'm assuming. Who knows? Yeah, well, that's like a trade trial attorney. I gotta figure that one out. Uh, the jury asked for the written jury charges here, and the judge refused to give them. Why? That's a good question. Uh, you, t you would probably know this better than I would, Linda, but apparently he really just wants them to hear what these definitions are of these key terms. He is not permitted to read this instruction to him. He's not permitted to give them a note. Maybe they don't. he doesn't want them focusing so much on the note, but maybe what their recollection is or maybe what they hear. Uh, I know that there are limits to what this jury can have in the uh, jury room. They can have the exhibits. They can have a readback of testimony. Uh, they won't, wouldn't be able to have uh, things that were not introduced into evidence but were given to a witness in order to refresh his or her memory. So there are limits about what they can consider and not consider. But your guess is as good as mine as to why they can't even get a simple written down instruction about, um, about what uh, a definition is of a, a key term. Now, is Judge Burke, Jesse, going to allow them to obviously deliberate through lunch? Is he bringing lunch in? Is he stopping deliberations when they have lunch? Uh, how long did he tell them they could go tonight? Give us a little bit about the, the process the jury has been told that they will be enduring. As far as I heard, there was no limit. Uh, back last week, I believe we heard that the judge instructed them that they have until March 6th in order to deliberate. Uh, my 
guess is they are they are sequestered right now. They are deliberating in this side room. There is a court officer out there. They're not allowed to leave the room without the permission of the court officer. Uh, while the rest of us, the rest of the reporters, were asked to leave the courtroom to excuse it for the lunch break, it appears this jury will be working through a lunch that is ordered in. They are sequestered at this point. I should note that the three alternates in this case, they were separately discussed with uh, by the judge, and they ultimately uh, have been moved. Uh, they, they have recessed. They are out there in the public. Uh, they said that they may, if they have to be called back, they will, uh, but there's a strong likelihood that they will not be called back. But they are still on duty waiting to hear what happens, but they are not with the rest of the jurors. They are living their life. They're having a lunch somewhere, uh, but they could be called back at any time. Well, Jesse, you are our eyes, our ears, as you have been in this most amazing case and with the jury instruction that looks like it may have, if there's a guilty verdict, some built-in appeal issues. So I hope you stay with her there and then come back to us later today. Thanks, Jesse.